Figuring out the, uh, the ABV in a beer is, um, you, st you start with your, ferment your wort, which is your fermentable sugars, potential fermentable sugar. You have your straining yeast, which has a range of how much they're gonna ferment that beer out. Attenuation is the, the term of how much the yeast will knock that fermentable sugar down. Um, 65 to 70% on some strains, uh, 70 to 75 on others. 75 to 80 plus on other strains. So, you know, when you're buying your champagne, you've got your, your extra dry, your dry, your brute, and that's all how much sweetness you want to have in that beverage. With your um, picking your strain and deciding how much alcohol you want in your beer, you, um, you factor those two in and you measure the density of the beer. So, you have water, which is uh, the density on a scale of density is 1.000. You add sugar to that, the density goes up. Um, in specific gravity or Play-Doh, bricks, whatever scale you want to use to measure sugar. Um, so in specific gravity, the, the, the fermentable sugars you add, you may start with like a 1.050. And that's how much sugar you put on top of the water. Where the yeast go in, they eat that sugar. You get alcohol, which is lighter than water, and the sugar depletes. So that 1.050 drops and drops and drops and drops to the point where you might hit like 1.009. Arbitrary numbers, but you can check it each day with your hydrometer and you can see how much the sugar's dropping. And you know when you're done fermenting because you're going to hit that number day after day after day after day. So you know your beer's done. You take what you started with, you take what you finished with, you subtract the two, and then you get a uh, alcohol calculator online, and you just plug those two numbers in and hit enter, and it spits out what your alcohol by weight is, and then it converts it to alcohol by volume. It, uh, measuring alcohol content, oh, I wish I could remember when it, they started doing it. Oh, man. The mid 1800s, I want to say, um, the hydrometer started to be widely used, and the hydrometer is a means of measuring the gravity of a fluid, so the density of the fluid. And uh, high sugar content increases the density of the fluid, and when you have alcohol being less dense than water, uh, as the sugar is turned into alcohol, the density is decreased. So you use the hydrometer to measure your initial starting sugar content, and then as you progress through fermentation, you're able to use the uh, decreasing density as measured through the hydrometer to then calculate your alcohol content. Um, what you do is you m take your starting gravity, so the initial wort sugar content, subtract that, or, um, and subtract the final gravity, the, what the beer finishes out at, um, subtract those from each other and then multiply the resulting factor, uh, the resulting number by a, uh, what we call it, F factor. I have been researching to figure out exactly where this, uh, the factors come from, but it's a uh, spreadsheet that everyone uses that was, as far as I know, put out by the British Tax and Trade Bureau, um, or the, the equivalent. Uh, many, many years ago, and it helps you factor to reach the target alcohol content. My personal preference is for a lower alcohol beer because I like drinking beer, and you can't drink a lot of really strong beer. People can brag about their alcohol tolerance or whatnot, but that's just early onset alcoholism and whatnot. Like, lower alcohol beer is the only way you can really cons drink beer in reasonable quantities and not be doing yourself uh, permanent damage. Um, so that's why we focus on it, uh, why I focus on it personally, um, I suppose, uh, at, at a very root level of personal interest, but uh, beyond that, it's that this brewery is focused on British beers, and more specifically, kind of like the greatest hits of British brewing of the last like 75 years, which includes a lot of really lower alcohol stuff. Um, it's not an intentional search for a niche in the marketplace, like the kind of session IPA um, craze as well as they're coming up with some session things that aren't IPA lately. Um, 
kind of came up as we were in the process of building the brewery. Um, so it's not intentionally riding a trend. It's just sort of like, you know, we're saying these styles have been around for a while. Say you like IPA, give uh, session IPA, give this stuff a try. But it's also been from a lot of the consumers that will get in here, uh, a lot of them kind of viewed as a godsend because thing ABV has been pretty high and climbing for a little while. I'm starting to see it die back down, but um, it's been super high for a really long time. And it's just, <laughs> it's not to the taste of a lot of beer drinkers. Um, yeah. It's not to the taste of some beer drinkers. I can't say everybody is going for that, but uh, it provides more diversity for the consumer. So the other reason we also do it, and why I think uh, it's why I think it's good for us, is we're doing cask ale, and casks because of the lower carbonation level don't seem to seem to do as well with higher alcohol beers. Um, so um, a lower alcohol content seems to suit that um, type of service um, much better. You keep, you keep good notes and you keep it clean and don't be afraid to reach out and email other home brewers. There's so much available information online. It's, it's hard to screw up a home brew. <laughs>